truck. I have in this happy box my plan to help with privacy on this house of glass. Five percent limo window tint. I have never installed a single inch of window tint in my life, and I'm going to do 120 square feet of it. I got a little window tint installation kit. It's probably not the best quality products you can get. Let's see if we can apply a little bit of window tint. Much, much, much later. Okay guys, it's been a while. As you might have noticed, it is a lot darker in here than when we started. I'm almost done. I've got just a couple panes to go until I'm finished. I have a whole box of tools here that I can use, but I only really use four. Five if you want to count a rack. First thing, soap solution. Tap water and Dawn dish soap. Eight ounces of water, four to six drops of soap. Push blade, which holds a razor blade. A good squeegee, a razor blade, and a felt edged applique. The tips, don't worry about perfection. There's a big difference between a square panel and automotive glass on a car. And I'll show you the difference. There's a molecular area that exists where it doesn't pucker and there isn't any light exposed. It is not worth your time and attempts trying to achieve that. We're gonna get around it, but long story short, you're gonna have some light shown around these panes of glass. Let's show you in person how this looks, and how I'm doing it. Okay, we're gonna start this out by hitting the glass with a little bit of that basic soap water solution. Give it a wipe down with the microfiber. Get a lot of the big debris off. Take the push blade, go around the perimeter of the glass, scraping the edges and the glass at the same time. Once you're done with the perimeter, you simply go over the rest of the surface of the glass. I like to alternate between straight lines and random to try and get everything. Hit the glass with a little bit of that soap water solution for a second time. Squeegee it off. This will wipe off most of the small little pieces of dust that you scrape loose with the razor blade. Wet the glass again for final application. One of the hardest things to do is to separate the window tint from the clear film on the back. I found the most consistent way for me to be able to do it is to take a sharp razor blade and split the hair between the two. Once you get the razor blade tucked in between them, you can just pull them apart and get it with your fingers. You need to try and wet the sticky backing on the window tent as is exposed. Wetting it keeps dust particles in the air from embedding themselves into it. It also prevents it from sticking to itself or things that you don't want it to stick to, just in case you don't have good control over it. The layer of water between it and the glass also makes it so that you can slide the film around and adjust it in place after it's made contact with the glass. Start in the middle, press that water out to the outsides. You'll notice I've left a pretty big tail on all four corners, extra material that needs to be cut off. It can be tricky to get the air worked out with those 
extra material on there, it kind of lets air get in behind the back until you get it trimmed. Now you need to take your razor blade and your applicator. Use your applicator to press the film down against the glass. Hold the razor blade between the applicator and the outer edge of the glass. You kind of have to feel this and it's a kind of a tricky technique to learn at first, but if you can get it down, this is a pretty fast way to get a custom fit to your pane of glass that you're working with. It saves you the trouble of having to do a test fit with the clear film backing still on it. And that saves a lot of time. Once you get it trimmed off, you can work the air out the rest of the way. Now, it's still possible to cut your film too long. You may have some pieces that try to pucker and have air behind them because the film's not small enough to fit down onto the pane of glass. Going back and trimming that stuff a second time is really hard to do and it very rarely works out for you. Usually you end up with a big piece of daylight showing through. Check it for bubbles that you can't see. Flashback. Of flashback. All right, just for you to see. I know you think we're looking at a landscape, but what we're actually looking at is the window tint on this glass. You can see how dark it is compared to an open window. So this is nice and clear, there's no bubbles. But what there is, is a line on the top. That is daylight. That is because the window tint does not go all the way against the top. In this particular one, it went against the sides pretty well. Here's my truck. This truck has 5% tint just like the bus. And on the back, it's more like a 2%. Really dark window tint. And you can't see anything wrong with it from the outside. But you also can't see anything wrong with it from the inside. And these are the standards that people want when they want to tint their bus. But here's the secret to it. This is the difference between a car, automotive glass, and those square panes on the bus. You see that? That's daylight. That's untinted glass, and then tint. This tint actually comes down a pretty good ways past the edge of your glass, but when your window's rolled up, it's hidden within a rubber seal, and it's nothing you ever have to look at. You don't even notice it. I didn't even notice that mine was this bad until I looked at it just now. It's the same all the way around and down the sides. But when this is all the way up, it's not a problem. It's obvious that you don't have to get that close to the edge with automotive window tint. And there's little tricks that they use to hide the edges. And you can see some spots in the corners. The corners are really hard to get right. Here's a few here. You can go so much faster if you say, okay, you know what, it's gonna be a little line. We'll go with it and we'll fix it later with a magic marker.
Magically gone. This is how it looks on the outside. Just black, non-see-through. It's just like glass. So as you can see, these are going together real fast now that I've had 46 chances to figure it out. There's a vast difference between how fast I can do one window and how fast I can do another versus beginning and end of the project. I made it a lot harder than I needed it to be. I deleted out a bunch of steps that I didn't need. Pre-fitting wasn't needed. Precise corner cutting wasn't really needed. Precise edge fitting, it's not necessary, but by the time I got to the end, I'm pretty much doing precise edge cutting. There's really nothing to color in on that one. Uh, but there are some that are, but you shouldn't sweat it. You're going to get better as you go. Don't waste your time just locked in on one specific pane because you can't get it right. You'll waste half your material trying over and over again. So, hopefully I can save you a little bit of time and energy. And maybe you can skip the unnecessary steps. You might want to prefit all of them. That may work better for you, but it does take twice as much time. I'm super glad that my bus has some privacy now. Thanks for stopping by, guys. That's how to window tint your bus. I'll see y'all later.